so excited to be joining you for this video. It's a little something different going on here. Um, my friend Brooke, who works at a cosmetology school, contacted me. Um, she works at Le James. It's uh, in the Quad Cities area, if you're familiar with the Midwest. She watches my videos. Thank you, Brooke, and thank you to anyone there at the school who also watches. But she had an idea to send me the kind of makeup kit that they get and then maybe I could put together a few looks or ideas for them on my YouTube channel. So I thought that would be super fun. I'm not a professionally trained makeup artist. I'm more of a makeup enthusiast. So I've never had, you know, a beauty school experience or a kit exactly like this to work from. So the kit is from a brand called Ofra. I'm going to be using primarily this kit and maybe a few extra products that I have thrown in to create first off a full face of makeup. Then for the eyes, we're going to take it day to night. So I'm going to show you this natural look and then how to make it more dramatic. We're going to work in sort of a plum berry colored smoky eye that I think is going to be really flattering on a lot of different eye colors. So really it's about makeup basics and if you don't have this exact kit um, there are plenty of comparable products out there. These are just really basic products and basic techniques. So I hope it's helpful to you and let's get started. All right so starting off this kit comes with several foundation shades. Um, I had to mix a couple of these to find what I believe was the right shade for me. I just did this on my hand using it, you know, on my own face, but you could definitely use some kind of a palette to mix different foundation shades. Whenever I'm doing someone else's makeup, it's pretty rare that, you know, the shade in just one bottle is just dead on perfect for them. But if I have several foundation shades like are in this kit, you know, you can mix them together and get the right look. So once you kind of mix those together, I'm going to dot my finished uh, <laughs> mixture here all over my face. And then with just my little spray water bottle, I've dampened a sponge. This is just like a generic beauty blender type sponge. And I'm gonna use that to pat in and blend this foundation. And I've concentrated most of the foundation in the center of my face. Um, also paying attention to some areas like under the eye where there might be discoloration. And this sponge used damp really um, helps any foundation have a more natural skin-like appearance. And if you want to use like a wedge type sponge, you know, you can buy those in really large packs and dampen that. You can also get a great look as well. You can see I'm really um, more than just rubbing this across my face. I'm really trying to press the foundation into the skin so we get more of just the look of perfected even skin as opposed to the look of, you know, product just sitting on top of someone's face. Also, don't disregard hairlines um, around the ear area, the jaw, um, everything really needs to be blended, not just on the face, but around it too. We've basically evened out the skin tone, but there's still some things that you can do. Still some areas that need a little added brightness or evenness. And um, the kit has this palette here called the Magic Roulette Concealer. And it's got some of those corrective shades that you sometimes see. Um, there's a, actually a lilac color, green. Um, I don't tend to gravitate too much toward those colored corrective but what I do really like is that there's some skin tone shades and then a white and I can tell that both of these skin tone shades are a little bit dark for me but I can take one and kind of blend it onto my hand here and then I can take some of the white and just like working with paints you know you start blending that in and then you get more of a skin tone match. So for this I'm now going to dab some of that shade that I just made and I'm going to dab it around my eye a little bit around my nose where I have some redness, broken capillaries and stuff. And then again going in with the damp sponge because this concealer has kind of a thick texture to it. So we really want it to blend out and look very skin-like, but the coverage is, is pretty decent. So um, the sponge can really be your friend in blending that in. And I like the little pointed tip because then you can just really work it into the eye area, the inner corners right up to the lower lash line because the discoloration around eyes tends to get really, really close to the eye itself. So we have worked to conceal some areas, you know, right under the eye in the inner corner, but really the face looks so um, natural and kind of naturally flattered by the light when you have brightness in this sort of a triangular shape there under the eye. So I've mixed up an even lighter shade. So just added a little more white and I'm gonna work in here right on the sides of the nose. Still, you know, technically under the eye, but more, you know, 
this area right here on the front of the face. And I'm just dabbing and pressing that into the skin. And you can continue with some of that lightness right up on top of the cheekbone. And so then you're getting a really like well lit look no matter where you are. So now that the skin is evened out, I'm going to set it lightly with a little bit of the um, skin tone powder. And this is the powder brush that comes with the set. And in any area where I really paid attention to covering, I'm not wanting to really scrub the brush over those areas. So I'm just doing more of a blotting effect here. Remember we did a lot of work around the eyes so we don't want to just wipe off what we did so I'm kind of blotting in those areas and then just really lightly. We don't want the look of powder just sitting on top of the skin. We want it to still look like skin. So kind of blot and use just a very minimal amount of powder there. Now you don't want to cake up too much powder on your under eye area, but just to make sure we set it and um, get a really nice flawless look there, I'm taking this little brush from e.l.f. Um, this is the small tapered brush and I'm dabbing into the white powder, which probably is termed as translucent. I'm not a big believer in actual translucent powder because I think it can show up as white. But for my skin tone, I'm dabbing into a little bit of that and a little bit of the skin tone. So it's going to end up being just a little bit lighter than what I put elsewhere on my face. And I'm just dabbing right under the eye area. Again on the other side. And now it's really mattified and really even and flawless right in this whole area. The kit also comes with sort of a mosaic style bronzer. It has hardly any shimmer. It's very undetectable. So I think this is the type of thing you can use as a contouring product as well. So with my powder brush first, I'm just gonna get a little bit on there. I'm gonna tap off any excess and I'm gonna kind of go right in here looking for that hollow of the cheek area. And since we're using such a big brush, it's a little more foolproof there. We're not getting, you know, some sort of just line of color, but it's very diffused and we're still getting a little bit of contrast in that area with this slightly darker powder. Another area that's great to contour is the forehead. So with that, you can take your brush, get into your product again and dab it right up into your hairline. You even really carefully with a smaller brush, get into that product and contour the sides of your nose a little bit more. Um, some people with, you know, maybe a flatter nose, they like to, you know, make it stand out a little bit more or seem a little more slim so you can just carefully go down the sides of your nose. It's not necessarily something you need to feel like you have to do every day with your makeup, but just an idea of what that powder can be used for. Something that this kit does not have that I think is really important is blush. Um, shout out to Coastal Scents. This website has a ton of great affordable palettes and this is my um, 10 blush palette and I think it's got a lot of great shades that work for so many skin tones. And, uh, for this look, I'm going to go with kind of this classic pink here and just get a little bit of that on a blush brush. That's a little bit smaller brush than what I used with the powder. And I'm going to apply this to the outer part of the apple of my cheek here. You don't want to get too close to your nose and get that look of redness going again. But right out here, it really just gives a young kind of flushed look. Outer part here and then just blending up. All right, now you can see uh, one eye is done, one eye isn't. And something I've been liking to do lately um, before I get into the eye makeup is really make sure my brows are done because I think something about a finished brow, it's like you don't overcompensate with more eye makeup to make up for a messed up looking eyebrow. So if you can get it done beforehand, I think it just puts in perspective more how your finished look is actually gonna come off. So um, I take an angled, a stiff angled brush and in, the midst of your eyeshadows, you actually do have a couple of nice matte neutrals. And so I'm mixing a little bit of the darkest brown and kind of a medium tan type color, getting a little bit on my brush, and I've already filled in my brow somewhat here, but I just go over some areas. I have naturally kind of thick brows, but I still find that they can look a lot more finished um, when some of the more sparse areas are just evened out. Then I'm taking an eyelid primer. This one's from e.l.f. It's just a dollar, um, but I think some sort of base on your lids before you start applying the eye makeup really, really helps. Uh, it helps the shadow cling. It helps 
helps it stand out more. Um, in a lot of cases, primers can help the shadow last longer throughout the day. So I'm putting that not only on my lid, but through the crease and up under the brow. Then I'm taking a flat eyeshadow brush and one of the light shades in the palette. And again, this is just gonna be basic eye makeup here for this first step. Um, it's something that could work for any occasion, something that just gives the eye some natural definition, but not too much extra. And so that light shade, I'm just patting it all over my lid. Now I noticed the kit does give you a couple of eye brushes. One is like a really small detail brush and the other is a very blunt cut um, angled brush. And this one I don't find too much use for. I don't love blending with the blunt cut brushes, but this one can be nice if you go to this lightest color and you want a little brightness around the inner corner. This is great for getting that targeted area there. So I'm going to the lightest shade of the eyeshadows. It's actually a little bit like iridescent. I was sort of surprised when I first used it. So don't go too overboard with this color or it will start to look a little bit blue, um, unless that's what you want, which is fine. But um, just for the purpose of brightening that area, um, keep it sort of light. Then I'm gonna go to that matte brown with an even flatter eyeshadow brush. This was the first one I used and you can see it's flat, but it's still a little bit full. This next one is even a little more targeted for the application. And so with that, I'm getting a little bit of the brown, I'm gonna pat this on the outer part of my lid. I'm really first putting my brush on the outer corner. That's where the most product's gonna go is where you first put your brush. So really concentrating it on the outer corner. And as I get less and less on my brush still, I'm working about halfway in on the lid. And then you're getting a blend there. So if you want a little bit more, just go back and build up a little bit more. And I want some definition in the crease as well. So I'm taking a fluffier brush, going back to that same matte brown, and it's gonna get a more sheer application when you use these fluffy crease blending brushes. So with this, again, outer corner first, that's where I want the most concentration of color. And then as less and less is on my brush, I'm pulling it inward. And of course you wouldn't have to follow this process or this technique to a T, but it's just an example of a basic look just to get, you know, some definition from the lid, a little bit of brightness, and then definition in the crease that allows um, the eye to look a little bit bigger when you, sm when you kind of smoke it out like this. And sometimes when I'm working with dark shades like this, I just want to bring in a bare brush, you know, a brush with no product on it so I can really make the edge of that darker shadow look seamless. You know, I don't want anybody to be able to see a distinct cutoff. Underneath the eye, I love using smudge brushes because I feel like they give a really softly defined look to the eye. It never looks too harsh. Going back to the matte brown, this shade's going to be your best friend. <laughs> and I'm just smudging here, starting on the outer corner, not even going back for any extra product, but just lightly bringing it in and whatever's still on the brush is there, but primarily we're getting definition, as you can see over here. It's mainly on the outer portion. The liner that comes with this kit is in a shade called Smoke, and it's kind of a dark charcoal color. It's really close to black, but not quite black black. With this, I'm going to go across my upper lash line. One of the hardest things I've found when doing eyeliner on other people, particularly with pencils, is that it can be hard to get right up in their lash line. You don't want any kind of gap between the lash line and your eyeliner. So don't be afraid to get right up in there. Practically feel like you're putting this on in between the lashes. It really will help with the finished effect. So there we are. You can see all across the upper lash line to give it an even softer effect. Back to the matte brown and the smudge brush and I'm just topping it off here. It just gives it an even softer look. Um, blurs the border of that pencil a little bit. Then I'm going to just curl my lashes. I like to hold it for about um, 15 seconds or so. This is actually a heated lash curler that I'm kind of obsessed with right now. It's from Mally Beauty and it just, my lashes naturally want to point down so this really gives them lift. And then I'm gonna put some mascara on top and bottom lashes. This is CoverGirl 
clump crusher. I find that the brush is a really nice size. It's just very easy to manage when you're getting the mascara on there. I like to get right at the base, then kind of wiggle it up through and that helps to separate the lashes. The water resistant kind, actually I love it because you don't have to worry about it smudging off of you or flaking off of you, but at the same time it's not terrible to remove. I hate taking off mascara and seeing some lashes come off with it, so this is a good one. Now the lipsticks in this kit can be a little bit dry, but I'm going to take a couple of them. And again, you could use, you know, a palette. I'm taking the one shade called Amethyst, and it's a light pink. And then I'm going to put on this shade called Mulberry, which is sort of a reddish berry color. I've prepped my lips with a little bit of lip balm. Then I'm taking my two shades that I'm mixing here to get the perfect pinky berry that I want. And I'm using a lip brush to apply this all over the lips. Sometimes when you're using a lip brush, you can really be precise with it. And in a lot of cases, you're eliminating your need for a separate lip liner because you are really just following very carefully the line of your lips. Okay, rollers out now. This is, you know, the finished look that we came up with for kind of a natural everyday look. Of course, not every day has to be a full face of foundation. There are tons of products out there, you know, that can give you a more sheer look, a lighter look, and you may not use so much concealer or whatever. But if you're going for pretty much, you know, even canvas type of face makeup, and then eyes that have some definition but aren't too deep and dark, this could be kind of a go-to for you. So now, here are a few fun tricks to take the eye look and make it even more dramatic for like a nighttime going out type look. Okay, nighttime eye, daytime eye. Um, really smoky, working in plum and pink. Um, you'll see we changed the lip as well. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you what we did there. Um, I took off the pink lip and I used this shade called Mimosa. It's just kind of a neutral. I really lightly dabbed that on my lips with my finger for a nice sheer application. And then I topped it off with this Revlon gloss in Bellini. This is a color burst gloss. So it gives a nice, like your lips, just a little bit shinier, nice and evened out and everything. Um, we're gonna take the small brush that comes with this kit and go to the shimmery mauve color. Everything was light here. Now it's gonna get just a little bit deeper on the lid. That's where, um, I want to concentrate that mauve. Then we're taking that flat brush that is really great for packing on product and I'm going to go into the dark plum. With that, I'm going to dab that on the outer part of the lid. So this kind of takes us almost a little bit darker than that dark brown was getting us here. So right in here. Then a technique I like to use when I really want lots of depth in the crease. Um, flip the brush over and we're going to almost get it wedged right in your crease, right there in the socket, and then really gently pull upward. And as a result, we're getting deep purple right in the crease. And I'm taking it most of the way in with that technique. While we're still on the dark purple shade, I'm gonna go ahead and take my smudger brush and go into the plum and we're taking that right under the eye and we're going all the way in this time. So you may have to go back for some more product and drag it all the way in, not totally surrounding the tear duct, but pretty close to it. So there's our smudgy, smoky lower liner. Then with a fluffier brush, we're gonna do sort of this transitional pink shade. And with that, I'm going to the really bright magenta, get a little bit on the brush, tap off the excess, and go right on the border of your purple. Um, everybody's got varying amounts of space between their eyebrow and their crease or their brow bone. Um, so just go up as high as you feel comfortable, but What's gonna give you the most effect is when your eyes are open and you can see this little, you know, faded look just above. This pink is super buildable, so if you want more of a pink look, go back for more and just top it off. Then a bare brush, I'm just blending out the border of that. Same concepts apply for natural makeup and dramatic makeup. I mean, with this kind of a smoky look, you don't want harsh edges. Some looks, maybe like a real high fashion look, you know, you do want some kind of bold edge. But here, 
Um, we're just keeping that part really blended just as far as talking about basic makeup. Just adding a little more plum and blending it out. But the nice thing about this technique is you can plug in other shades. You could do this as a navy eye. You could plug in a forest green or any shade you really want to work with. We could do all browns and intensify what we did earlier. But um, it's just a matter of knowing, you know, depth in the crease and then use those fun mid-tone shades up in this area. How about some false lashes? That's always fun. Um, I'm going to take a liquid liner. I think it's really important when you're placing false eyelashes on the lash line to put them on a fairly thick line of eyeliner so the band that the lashes are on kind of disappears and people can't see like, oh, there's something glued to your eyelid. By the way, I have a really comprehensive false lash video. It's called False Eyelashes 101. It goes from picking out the lashes, putting them on, taking them off, cleaning them, reusing, and stuff like that. So it really addresses everything if you're interested. Um, but I'm taking this Milani Color Play Felt Tip Pen. Uh, it's in black line. Any black liner, it doesn't have to be liquid, but I just think liquid is really quick. And these pins are just super easy. So I'm just drawing that all the way across the upper lash line. If you're feeling fancy, you could wing out the liner at the end. I'm just going to sort of come to a stopping point here. I kind of thicken it out a bit, but I'm not necessarily winging it out. My lashes are from Ilure. They're number 107. Um, they look like this. They're um, a little bit longer on the outsides, shorter on the insides, and that, that's what gives you that kind of flared out, almost like cat-eyed look. Love using Revlon Precision Lash Glue because it has the wand. It doesn't take forever to dry, um, and you just really have tons of control with the amount of product going on the lash band. Now the key when you're applying false lashes is once you get that glue on, you wanna let it get a little bit tacky. For this kind of glue and for most kinds, I usually wait a good 45 seconds um, so then when I go to put them on my eye, they really cling to the eye and I can kind of work with them as opposed to the glue being so wet that they literally just fall back off. So um, give it a little bit of time to get tacky. Don't get in the habit of blowing on the lashes to dry them off because um, I don't think clients want to see you blowing on something that's going to go on their eye. I'm going to hold the lashes here in the center of the lash, not touching the band, but I'm just holding the lashes itself. Um, or themselves, and then I'm going to align that with the center of my eye here. Focusing first on getting that first part put down, then I go to the ends and I make sure that the innermost corner gets attached and then the outer corner. And you're using that eyeliner as your guide. You want to place it not on your own lashes, but on the liner extremely close to the natural lashes. So once you get that on, and you can see you're probably seeing some glue, that dries and disappears. Um, if you ever feel like once it's dry it does not disappear, you can go over the liner again. I mean, it's no big deal. Sometimes I like to kind of blink onto my finger and it ensures that these lashes are going to dry. They're still kind of in a drying phase now onto my eye and I want them to be definitely turned up and not down. If your lashes are kind of pointing themselves just a little bit down, it'll actually make your eye look smaller. It'll cut your eye off a little bit. And once you do feel like they've gotten most of the way dry, um, I take a little more mascara and just focusing at the base of the lash, not raking it all the way through, um, I just dab it here and it kind of ensures that the real lashes and your fake lashes are um, kind of bonded together. And if we hadn't already done that first look, I would still, let's say you were doing this look fresh from the start, I would still put mascara on first, then the lashes, then top it off with one more coat because I feel like that initial coat of mascara gets your lashes in that upturned um, fashion that they need to be to, to even begin to blend with these to begin with. But that's just my personal strategy. Um, also, just because this is a little bit smokier and a little more dramatic, I am applying another coat of mascara to the lower lashes. Q-tips are your friend. 
And I almost forgot <laughs> I would have done this probably before the false lashes, but I'm taking that smoke liner again and I'm putting that in my inner rim here. So I'm just gently, ever so gently pulling down and just running this liner all the way across my inner rim. And that just, I don't know, something about that looks extra smoky. If you're working on someone with super small eyes, this will make the eye look a little bit smaller. So it may not be a technique you choose to use on everyone, but I think when we're going for dark and dramatic, um, it really creates a contrast from the way the eyes were before. So I hope you enjoyed this look. Thank you so much for watching. Brooke, thank you for sending me the Beauty School palette. I had so much fun with it. It really has a nice array of different eyeshadows, actually nicely large sized eyeshadows. And um, the concealer palette too was pretty cool. So I really appreciate it. Thank you all for taking time to watch and have a great day. Bye.